power over the ancient altars of your forefathers is you must separate yourself from their powers. But if you are saying that you are a Christian and you are still carrying on as though you are part of them, their altars is going to have power over you. And their altars are going to kill you. I wonder if you people are hearing me now. I said the only way you will have power over the ancient altars of your family is you have to disconnect yourself. Is this true? You have to disconnect yourself from their altars, from their wicked ways, from what they have been accustomed to doing. And you have got to make a definitive decision that you will not be that way. Am I talking to somebody here yes, today? Prophetess. Am I talking to anybody here? Yes, prophetess. Yes, ma'am. So he's saying to the people as we prepare to go, he said, tell the people, I want them to have power over the ancient family altars. But if they're going to have power over the ancient altars of their family, they have to disconnect themselves from the ways of the family. Yes, Is this true today? Yes, ma'am. Is anybody hearing my voice? Yes, ma'am. You have to what? Disconnect, disconnect yourself. yourself. You have to do what? Disconnect, disconnect yourself. Away. You have to move yourself out of their ways. Yes, you have to stop doing the way they do it. Right, you yes. have to stop going to the places that they go. Am I talking to somebody? Yes, ma'am. You talking. Hallelujah. You have to change your ways. Turn, he said, from your wicked ways. Change your way, your ways, uh, the way you act, the way you respond. Change the way you think. Change the way, praise God, your attitude, your character. God is saying, turn from your wicked ways. Yes, prophetess. Hallelujah. Is anybody hearing me here today? Yes. So he said, tell the people, disconnect themselves from the altars of the ancestors. Disconnect yourself from their altars. Disconnect yourself from their wicked ways. Discover what ways they are, praise yeah, God. Yeah, yeah. And then get a step in praise God. Trying to change the ways that they are. Because why? If you continue on in the ways that you are, your attitude, your personality, your characteristic is going to kill you. Wow. Come on, prophet. Hallelujah. This is good, prophet. Hallelujah. Yes, ma'am. So God said, I want to do something, and I want to do it in a way, praise God, that is going to, praise God, cause terror on your enemies instead of, praise God, your enemies continuing to cause terror on you. Yes, ma'am. I want to do something. I want to cause terror on your enemies yes. instead of your enemies continually causing terror on you. Praise God. Are you all hearing me out there? Yes, prophet. I want to praise God cause terror on your enemies. I want to cause the things that is attacking you. I want to give you power so that you can attack it. So that it will no longer have dominion over you. Yes. Is anybody hearing me? Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank Hallelujah. you, Lord. Thank you, mighty God. He said, I want you to begin to have power and I want you to have authority yes. over all the powers of the enemy. Come on, and so he said, tell the people the thing that is tormenting some of you and the thing that some of you pray, no matter how you fast and no matter how you pray and no matter praise God, amen, you could go on a dry fast, a seven day fast, a 21 day fast, but it seemed like when that fast is over, your demons are right back there. It is because, amen, the thing that you are fighting, praise God, is not just a demon, but you are fighting what is called an altar. Come on, prophet. Come on, prophet. Hallelujah. Yes, ma'am. Wow. 
Oh Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. You are fighting what? An altar. You are fighting what? An altar. What are you fighting? An altar. What are you fighting? An altar. What are you fighting? An altar. I can't hear some of you. What are you fighting? It's because you are fighting an altar. Yes, yes, and the altar is not just any old altar. I told you the other day, praise God, amen, that the altar, amen, is, amen, praise God, amen, in existing in the invisible realm. And the altar is not just something that is built out of wood and stone, but an altar, praise God, exists because of why somebody has established an order in the spirit realm. Jesus. Come on, prophet. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Somebody say that altar, that altar that's fighting me. That's fighting me. It has to be destroyed. It has to be destroyed. Say that altar that's fighting you has to be destroyed. So God said, praise God. He said, tell the people. He said, you need power over, praise God, the ancient family altars. Yes. Because if you don't get power over those altars, praise God, they're going to destroy them. That's why so many of you, praise God, even though you are a Christian, you still see your dead and Ancestors keep coming to you. Praise God. They keep coming, praise God, to try to find you. They keep coming, praise God, to call you. Why? Because, amen, they don't want to let you go. Praise God. Is anyone hearing me today? Yes. They don't want to release you, praise God. This is the reason why some of you, praise God, how do you know when you are under an attack, praise God, of an ancient altar or the ancient altars of your family, praise God, you can always tell because why? There are certain mysterious things that continue to happen happen to you, praise on, God. Brother. Amen, amen, without praise God. Any, any praise God, amen, answer. Praise God, amen. There are things that, that, are, that like mysterious diseases and uh, there's the simple mysterious sickness, amen. There are strong urges uh, that ordinarily you would have overcome it, uh, but because of what you're fighting, which is an altar, praise God, you seem to be defeated again. Come on, prophetess. Hallelujah. Are you people hearing me out there? Yes, God said, I want to deliver you from the altars of your ancestors. I want to deliver you from ancient family altars. So what does it have to do with your life then? Praise God. Unless you begin to understand why an altar exists and what an altar is, you will continue to go around in a circle. And this is what I see in the church. Even as I deliver people, I begin to see, praise God, amen, that people, amen, they come to the church and you cast their demon out, but they don't even come back to pray. They don't even come back. Then you came to church today and half of you did not even bring what is called a Bible. You are a joker. That devil is going to kill some of y'all. My God. Hallelujah. So I see people like being attacked. And I see people being taken out in their dreams, people being taken out in their mind, people being taken out, praise God, amen, in their health. Praise God, how do you know, praise God, that you're being, praise God, harassed by an ancient altar of your family, some of you, praise God. Because if you don't get yourself, you're going to die like a miserable, poor fool. And you and me up in this house, you always putting on clothes and putting on this and putting on that. But you are still broke because you are under the spell of the altars of your ancestors. So it's like no matter press corner how press corner amen we pray for some of you there's nothing changing because why you have not yet come to the reality that what is fighting you is something that is far greater than meets your eyes my god hallelujah hallelujah thank you lord give god a praise thank you lord hallelujah hallelujah thank you lord Stand to your feet and give God a praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. What the devil is going to do with some of you, by the time you realize what he has done and the way he has positioned you, and set you, it's gonna be too late because you have not gotten into, you've not entered the arena of your own fight for your own life. You've not yet entered the arena 
for the fight for your own life. You're still depending on somebody else to fight for you. And this is where people are going to be taken out. This is where people are going to be destroyed. Gideon was in a place and he was like, why if God is for us, why are our enemies prevailing over us? And the Bible said that an angel came and he said, it's because you all have done evil in the sight of God. And the Midianites began to take them out because why? They had erected in their village a shrine, an altar with an idol on it. And God said to them, I want to bless you all, but you all still got idols in your houses. You still got practices that you, that you engage in. And this is what I see, like some of you people, like you're still trying to mix, praise God, light with darkness. And you're still trying to mix witchcraft with holiness. You know, somebody told somebody the other day, I went on a fast for you. I went on a fast for you. And they said it with so much anger. Like, what do you mean you went on a fast for that person? Like, you mean you didn't, you ain't fasting for yourself? You fasting against another sister in the church? So it's like a question of where are people spirituality? It's so contentious and it's so confrontational that you wonder where are the witches? Where are the witches? Right in the church. Right in the church. Right in the church. Hateful, disgraceful, distasteful, angry. And when people cannot have their way, their own way, they hate you passionately. And then you're going to see some of them because they are wicked in their nature. They ain't coming out to church no more. Because when you begin to mess with their demons. No, I don't mean the superficial demons. I'm talking about the real demons. Self-righteousness is wickedness. Are you hearing me? Yes. Selfishness is wickedness. Yes. People that think that they are so powerful, but you are so pitiful. Yes. Are you people hearing me today? Yes. So God is saying, if you are going to accomplish anything, if you're going to accomplish anything, if anything is going to happen for you, then you must first of all gain power over those ancient spirits yes, come that on, a on, lot of y'all still carry it. Come on, Prophet yes. Jesus. You're right. Are you people hearing me? He yes. said, like, get power over them. Because this is what is coming from their altar. This is what's coming from their altar. This is what, what when they establish their altar. They establish their altar with a mission and a mandate that all of you, that all of your generation will service them. Come on, Prophet. I don't know if you people are hearing me. Come on, Prophet. Hallelujah. All of who? All of you will service them. Yes, ma'am. And when you trying to be a mixed breed, a mixture of this and a mixture of that. Come on. You're going to get killed. Yes. Just yes. why some of your problems, that's why some of you are sick. Just why you are, all you're hearing is cancer. All you're hearing is this. All you're hearing is that. All you're hearing is, some of you, uh, because why? You are trying, you're not going fully away from the altar. Jesus. Wow. Come on, prophet. Hallelujah. Truth. So God said, tell the people, destroy the ancient family altars get rid of the wicked ways of your ancestors get rid of the practice
practices. Get rid of the idioms. Get rid of the old wives fables. Get rid of your old belief system. Get rid, praise God, of your bad ways. Get rid of your, get rid of the ways that you are still following after. Yes, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Somebody God. said his grandmother told him when he come home from church, walk in the house backwards. My God. Microphone. Sprinkle salt in the four corners of the house. Jesus. Are you kidding me? You are doing the same thing your ancestors were doing. That's right. Are you hearing me? Yes, prophet. You are still practicing the same things. They were practicing. And this why, so their altars, their altars are calling you. Yes. Their altars are calling yes. you. Yes. Are you people there? Yes. Yes. It's speaking. Hallelujah. Right. Come on, prophetess. Your altars is calling you to them. And this is the reason why. So why are you, how come you are giving into their altar? Because number one, you have no prayer altar yourself. Come on. You have no prayer life yourself. You have no prayer time yourself. Two minutes, amen, is not praying. Two minutes is a big joke. Are you people understanding me? The altars that is controlling your life and controlling your destiny, those people put time into that altar. Those people put effort into that altar. Those people put money into that altar. Those people put sacrifice into that altar. Whenever an altar is erected, altars don't just die. Talking. Right. What did I tell you? It is a legal system of operation. Yes. It is what? A legal, legal system, system of operation. Yes, ma'am. It connects you, it connects the spiritual realm to the natural realm. This is an altar. It does what? It connects the spiritual realm to the natural realm. There's only one way. One way that can happen. There has to be an altar set up somewhere in order for the spiritual realm to be connected to the physical realm. There is somewhere, keep looking around. You're going to discover that is happening because an altar. An altar. For a spirit to enter to your wall like that and come inside your house come on. and cause it all the pandemonium that it is causing check your house check somewhere there's an altar somewhere check the neighborhood there's an altar somewhere the spirit will not be able to just enter your house like that that's right come on prophetess is somebody hearing me yes prophetess so an altar is a place or a system that has been set in place, praise God, where the spiritual realm has the ability to make some type of contact, amen, with the physical realm. The altar is a legal system of operation for the spirit realm. In other words, a spirit cannot do something legally in the earth or anywhere unless it has passed over Woo! an altar. Hallelujah. Am I talking to somebody here? Talking. An altar gives permission, amen, to spiritual laws, yes. contracts, agreements, pacts, credences to function and to work in the earth. An altar, it gives permission. It gives authority. Now you don't see the contract. You don't see the pack. You don't see the agreement. But when somebody goes to a witch doctor and carries your picture and pays some money there, the altar that that witch has is what that witch uses to carry out that contract to kill you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Am I talking to somebody here? So this altar 
is a serious thing. Altars are not fragments of our imagination. An altar is not a, a praise God, a makeup. Praise God, it's not a fairy tale. An altar, when we say an altar, we're not just talking about this iron. We're not just talking about wood and stone. That wood and stone that you see that person have, that is the physical representation of their altar. But their real altar exists in the invisible realm. Come on, Pastor Hallelujah. You're teaching us, Prophet. Thank you, Lord. Is anybody hearing me out there? Yes, Prophet. So the first thing you need to know about altars is that it's not the devil's idea to make an altar. No. It was not Lucifer's idea to come up with the word altar. Am I talking to somebody? It is not Satan's idea. It was not his idea to say, I want to do something that called altar. The first time anyone has ever heard the word altar, it was God's idea. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on, prophet. You're talking. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Is anybody hearing me in this place? The first time that you ever heard the word altar yes. was when God introduced, praise God, man to altar. Yes. Is, are you people hearing me here? Yes. The first time yes. that you ever saw the word altar yes. was when God told man, yes. build me an altar. Yes. Hallelujah. Is this true? Yes. So when Noah came out of the ark in Genesis chapter 8, the Bible said the first thing he did was he did what? He built an altar unto the Lord. Come on, somebody. As soon as he came out of the ark, the first thing he did was do what? Build an altar unto the Lord. In Genesis 13, the Bible said that Abraham, praise God, went to a place and he built an altar unto the Lord, praise God. Am I talking to somebody? So it's God's idea. It is not man's idea. It is not the devil's idea Amen. to raise an altar. It was always God's idea. Yes. Thank Hallelujah. You, Lord. you right, prophet. You Bridget. right. Talk it. So God told man to build an altar. He said, build an altar. Yes. Put a sacrifice there. Abraham built an altar. Isaac built an altar. Jacob even built an altar. And I could go on from Genesis to Revelation. Yes. I can show you, praise God, at least 365 times, 364 times in the Bible where the word altar is mentioned. So altar was always all about God. God himself wanted man to be up on stand, to be able to set up what is called an altar. But and here's what happened now when man began to realize that the power that altars have what Satan did was amen as a perpetrator he began to put it in the hands of evil men and women if God can have an altar and altars are causing things to shift he's thinking in his mind that if God can have an altar and altars change things and cause things to turn around, then they say, I might as well create an altar also. The thing is, is that when God told man to create an altar, the thing that moves an altar is called sacrifice. Yes. The thing that causes the thing to the altar to come alive is called a sacrifice. So which means, praise God, you put in an altar in your house and there is no sacrifice on this altar to connect you to that altar. You are wasting your time. The Houston, Texas Prophetic Deliverance Fire Revival is not cooling down anytime soon. Apostle Edison Nottage and Prophetess Dr. Maddie Nottage bring the altar of fire and power to the state of Texas. The unforgettable Prophetic Deliverance Revival of Fire and Power will bring a showdown of the altar against wicked. Come to the place where God will arise with demonstration and power to defeat every plan of the enemy. Friday, November 18th through Sunday, November 20th, 2022 at 7.30 p.m. nightly Central Standard Time in Houston, Texas at 2030 Humble Place Drive, Humble, Texas 77338. Register now to experience 
fervent, effectual prayer, explosive praise and intense worship, accurate prophecies, powerful preaching, prophetic deliverance, supernatural miracles, signs and wonders, and more. Call 1-888-825-7568 or 1-242-698-1383. Visit our website at manynottage.org. Register now to experience the prophetic deliverance revival fire in Humble, Texas at 2030 Humble Place Drive. Tell a neighbor, tell a friend, bring the entire family and be blessed as you encounter the supernatural God who answers by fire. Yeah, Houston, we're coming, we're coming, we're coming. Houston, hallelujah. <laughs>